Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. um, dear fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, my name is Tatiana and I am a current president of the strongest and I dare say the best club in the area, Toastbusters. And tonight, uh, for those of you who do not know, we are a part of worldwide organizations called Toastmasters and this is an um, organization which unites 470,000 club members in 240 countries. So for those of you who have an ability and a chance to travel, you can join at, and attend any club anywhere in the world just being a member of one club. So use that opportunity if you have a chance. And tonight we have an unusual meeting. It's going to be a combination of, I was going to say two clubs, but I see we have more than two here, at least three or four club members I see here. So let's go ahead and have fun tonight. And um, to stay aligned with the best tradition of the Toastmasters community, I would like to invite to this stage those of you who are here for the first time, I mean, those of you who are visiting our club for the first time, please. And you don't want to say, right? A little bit of uh, information about yourself, your name, what you do for your, for a living, <laughs> and what your expectations from visiting our club. Okay, my name is Nina. Uh, I'm a scientist. I'm uh, doing uh, research uh, investigating development biology and uh, ovaries and eggs developing the ovaries. So um, I'm very interested in this um, uh, meetings. I was yesterday at the Vlatov meeting and here, uh, and I'm here now. I was um, very excited yesterday and also today for, for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I see you are very busy with, with visiting Toastmasters Club. <laughs> Keep doing <laughs> And now I would like to invite here the host of our meeting. Yes, the Toastmasters, Natalie Chernyanka. Please welcome. Thank you so much. How carefully should I be with the microphone? Uh, let's and ask our online audience how audible you are. Our viewers, uh, online audience, is it fine if I move a little bit? Do you hear me? Do you catch me? Unfortunately, if you stray too far from the microphone, we will not hear you very well. Oh, no, it's a pity. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a pity, of course, I'd like to move. But OK, hello, hello, hello to everyone. I'm glad to see you and at least sort of uh, today's participants visited yesterday is Lados Masters and I'm happy that I shouldn't uh, explain everything that uh, we'll have today. So. I am today Toastmaster. I will uh, help you and provide through the meeting. Uh, uh, I also like to, um, so I, I don't see our online audience, but they see us, don't, uh, let's don't uh, forget about them. And let's go start it, our meeting today. My idea today to discuss our day, how was your day? I don't pretend to discuss um, this uh, huge idea that we should be positive and should, we should uh, think positive. It's just a simple idea. I learned it from my four years nephew. Uh, once I stayed at my mom's, uh, so my sister's place where my parents also live. And when I tried to bring him to bed, he asked me, how was your day today? Uh, what are you thankful for? What didn't you like in your day today? And it was so sweet, it was so simple, but this, this idea, I like it. And uh, so then I learned that it, he learned it from my mom and it's like a daily routine for them before going to sleep. And just think about it, how many things we don't mention in our daily life. It's just like it's routine, we have many plans, we are stressed, but just simple things like a small talk with our friends, or it shouldn't be great events. So my idea today, just to make you think about your day, your days today, what bad or what good did you have? What, uh, like what, uh, which emotions did you have? So just discuss it. And uh, today we have a group, a team of um, experts 
this could help us uh, to, to open the meeting. And uh, I, I'm excited to invite uh, Lilia Sapina uh, with the thought of the day. And I'm excited because I'm interested how you can develop the topic of the day into the thought of the day. So welcome to the stage. Mm -hmm. So simple, so human question. And uh, you can answer in your space. You can sound uh, short and useful uh, and polite. And yes, as well, <laughs> uh, by adding the thought of the day. How about you? Uh, you can also um, answer super positive. It was the best day in my life. Awesome. Gorgeous. A point of order, point of order. Could we have you closer to the microphone and could Martino please mute his microphone? Okay, yeah, I just did. Uh, my day started. <laughs> you were so okay. Uh, my day started uh, with uh, the new news uh, from my um, uh, boss um, that we have a uh, deadline today <laughs> and um, um, we were gives um, we were given uh, the task of um, completing um, a three uh, days job in a few hours and uh, this happens uh, when we uh, when important uh, to complete um, uh, the projects on time and um, even uh, even at the exp expense uh, exp expense expense of 
who we're looking. And um, in fact, we didn't um, to work effectively uh, for several days. Um, <laughs> And uh, today I am timer and um, I suggest you work um, uh, effectively and uh, then have a rest. Um, I will help you uh, to control the um, frame time and um, during, I, uh, during the speech, uh, I will uh, record uh, I will write uh, those who went um, beyond the time frame. And um, at the end of the meeting, I um, tell I tell you about the results and um, uh, basic rules. Uh, green card means um, it's time to end your speech. Yellow card means uh, that uh, time uh, limit uh, is coming to the end. And um, red card means um, your time is up. And uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. We are looking forward already for your report at the end uh, of the meeting. And as uh, Lilia already said, we can differently describe our day, how was it. We can uh, say that, uh, oh, okay, it was fine, or it was all right, uh, or it was very stressful, or it was just happy, or you can say, uh, it was good. So I'm glad to introduce to the stage our uh, counter today. <laughs> it's Tatiana Alexandrova. Hello, dear Toastmasters and guests. Imagine being given a glass, a glass of water with bits of dirt for a, or sand in it. Would you drink this water? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you would if it is the only water left in, the, in, in a de desert and you have no other options. But otherwise you wouldn't, I believe. So now we imagine, uh, imagine the water is a speech. Today in my role as a counter, I will be listening your speeches very carefully and will be making notes how many such inappropriate words or sounds you will use in your presentation speeches. I will give you a few examples of such words and so, well, but the sounds could be uh, mm, er, and others. Let's uh, drink clean water today and enjoy the evening. Thank you. It is a very important role for today, and we are hoping that it, you will be very precise in your duties. Uh, so the next one, our expert who will also help us uh, to have the great meeting today, is a grammarian and uh, word. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, in wordmaster. Okay, grammarian and wordmaster, Artyom Bacherov. Try using it so the okay. yes, so that the audience yeah, here opinion. also yeah is aware of what I'm talking about. So, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm the grammarian for today, and 
what I would like to say is we all make mistakes. The important thing is we don't repeat them. And by doing this, we improve our speech and we grow. I'm not an exception. I make mistakes as well, so I won't be too harsh on you. I will be keeping track of grammar mistakes, mispronounced words, and I will also be looking for some good examples of language. I'm also word master today, and I would like to introduce phrase of the day. I've scribbled it on the board. I'm afraid it's not very visible. To do a daily routine, what does it mean? Uh, it is to do a habitual action. Microphone, please. To do daily routine, it's doing a habitual action. For instance, uh, my daily routine, my morning routine is doing yoga every morning. Am I audible? <laughs> I hope so. So please, please do use to do daily routine. And I'll tell you the winner at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Artem. We will try not to disappoint you. And it's a great, uh, great uh, phrase, actually, for today. Of course, uh, my idea was the same. You can uh, have this or build a new habit uh, or micro habit just to think at the end of the day about your day and to be grateful or thankful or angry maybe with it, but uh, at least to think about your day. So it can be also your daily routine. And it's the first uh, um, First time when I use this word, Artyom, be, be careful with it. <laughs> so, um, and we have one more expert for the day. And I'm, I'm really um, wanted to invite you, Samira Tostar, quiz master. Of course, we don't have the same role in our club. And it's really interesting what you can tell us about your day today and your role. How was your day today? I'm just uh, happy to see you all in person finally because um, recently I had to come back to Moscow. A bit louder, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yes, recently I returned back uh, to Moscow for my vacation uh, because three months ago I moved to another country due to my work and I didn't have a uh, an opportunity to visit uh, Toastmasters Club offline, so I'm really <laughs> glad to be here. And today uh, I will be a quiz master, and uh, as a quiz master, I will be carefully listening to your speeches. And during the meeting, I will be preparing questions uh, based on your speeches, both prepared and improvised. And uh, at the end of the meeting, I will check your listening skills. And uh, the most attentive guys will receive very delicious and sweet candies <laughs> from me. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for, for your role, for explaining to us about your role. And now we are ready for the next uh, part of the meeting, for the next session. It's a, a huge one and very important. It's a session uh, with the prepared speeches. And I hope that our online uh, audience will not be happy at the end of the meeting and they will hear everything <laughs> and they will carefully listen to us. Uh, so the, the first uh, speaker today is Ekaterina Dimova with your uh, speech with a long, long, uh, so it's a long, long topic, it's a long title, uh, right? Carpe diem, it is the perfect message for our time or just a buzzword. And just for, uh, for everybody here, uh, ev every speaker has its own goal during the project and uh, you can find uh, in the program the project uh, of Ekaterina for today and for the next speakers as well. And for Ekaterina, is, uh, the, the goal for today, the, um, the task, 
to review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present an improvised speech without notes. So Ekaterina, welcome to the stage and good luck. Can you hear me? I hope so. Uh, I will try to stick to the microphone. Perfectly. Yeah. So, hello, guys. Uh, do you know what does mean? Carpe diem. Does anybody? No. Does anybody? No. No. <laughs> you are happy because I'm going to explain. Uh, so, actually, this is a phrase to do daily routine <laughs> consciously. It means do every day uh, consciously and live every day to the fullest. And um, to be honest, I didn't do it before. I mean, um, I deliberately uh, avoided all this stuff. Um, Can I start again? <laughs> so, sorry for that, okay. Uh, so, can I start over? <laughs> can I start over because, you know? So, okay, uh, let's, play by ear, but I'm going to move a little bit. So, uh, as I mentioned, this is a case phrase uh, that, uh, that basically means for us to live to the fullest and uh, here and now. And before I didn't know about it, I uh, didn't actually even believe in it. I uh, deliberately avoided all uh, this stuff with all the you know, uh, with different books, uh, please, the miracle of this moment, uh, the, uh, all this, you know, stuff. And, um, however, something happened. Actually, uh, back to 2008, it was a financial crisis. Somebody probably knows what was that. It was, uh, it was very stressful was very, very uh, difficult. Uh, I'm from financial department. Uh, so it was uh, at the end of the week. Uh, Do not deviate from microphone. I uh, had a conversation at the end of the week with my friend and um, we were talking about different stuff, uh, like uh, how was your day? And um, at the beginning, the friend of mine, she asked me, how was your week? Very simple question, right? And um, to my surprise, I didn't know what to say. I mean, I knew, but I didn't remember detail of my week. I remembered something, but I didn't remember what I was wearing on Monday, for example. I didn't remember what I was doing on Friday. I didn't remember what I was, uh, com uh, who I was communicating with on Thursday, etc. For me, it was like a wake up call. And um, I decided, okay, what should I do? Because I don't want to live my life only a little bit because I remembered that only 20 minutes a day I was fully presented. It was my early morning when I was sitting in the kitchen alone. My family was asleep and I was drinking a cup of coffee. This aroma from the coffee, you know, I <clears throat> was only that time fully presented. But I knew I didn't want to live only 20 minutes a day. I wanted to feel and enjoy this life all the time. Maybe not whole day, but definitely the most of the day. So I decided, okay, I, start, I should start with a bookshelf, 
which I avoided before. And I went to the uh, book stores and grabbed all, <laughs> all books, uh, which again I avoided before. And um, I read it, all of them actually. And you know what? I realized that um, it, it is not what we are doing that matters, but how we are doing it. For example, uh, wash the dishes. Yeah, it's simple, simple. No, no, no. Seven and nine minutes I should speak. Yeah, I, I just started. I just started. <laughs> Sorry for that, guys. Uh, so, um, uh, wash the dish, right? It's very simple, but we can do it in two different ways. First is we can wash the dishes in order to keep uh, clean, uh, uh, to keep clean them. But another way we can wash dishes in order to wash dishes. So fully presented, right? And I was thinking, well, how I can do it? Yeah. And uh, of course, from that books, I um, got a lot of techniques, which I was going to share with you. But now I know not all of them I can share because of I'm pressed for time a little bit. Uh, so, another insight that I got was, um, I don't know why, but people actually don't want to live and be presented fully. And the more I learn, the more I understood, understood that, uh, first of all, uh, we live in this VUCA or bunny world, right? When uh, everything changed at once. And, um, you know, we, the fast flow of our life is uh, actually, uh, we want to get everything at once done yeah, immediately. And, um, well, uh, second reason was that our um, we actually uh, fear of reality. We have a fear of reality. What does it mean? It actually means we live in so, again, very scary world, which uh, is uh, all this around us, uh, all, you know, uh, dirty um, politic games all this tough pandemic and uh, others and uh, people including me we didn't want to go through all the stuff right and uh, third reason why people don't want to live fully yeah mindfulnessly uh, because uh, very simple we don't have a special organ to measure time a moment in time uh, we have you know eyes to uh, see we have our uh, mouth to test something and uh, uh, we have you know nose to smell something but we don't have any organ to uh, actually measure time we can look at a clock but there are only numbers there right and uh, Actually, the concept of uh, time very interesting. I'm not going to dive into it today, uh, but I would like to next time I will. And um, well, there are three reasons, as I mentioned. And what to do? Can we? Uh, how we can get out of it? How we can slow down and get into the moment and to enjoy our life? And as I mentioned, there are some techniques i'm going to share only two only two uh, one of them is actually very simple see like you uh, see at the first time for the first time everything and another one is meditation 
it's um, quite, on the one hand, simple, but on the, uh, on the other, quite difficult. I'm not going to share with you how we can do it again, but we can. And to cut a long story short, as usual, I would like to say a lot, but I have no time. Um, well, I would like to finish with one phrase uh, from the peaceful warrior. Probably somebody watched this, I hope so. So, uh, the main character said, the journey, what actually brings us happiness, not the destination. So we should enjoy every moment and try to feel every, you know, every touched everything. So I would like to say again a lot of, but I, I was silly enough at the beginning. <laughs> I forgot everything <laughs> from my speech. I didn't tell everything what I was going to. But anyway, let's next time I will. Uh, so guys, this is the moment. J uh, just relax. Uh, wake up your giant inside of you and see the moment. Yeah, Carpe Diem, actually. Thank you. Irina, thank you so much. I'm surprised uh, how your speech was in line with our uh, topic today. So uh, it was uh, everything about it. Enjoy your moment. And I uh, remember one more movie with Adam Sandler click. It's also about enjoying the moment, even it's maybe negative, not enjoying, but don't uh, uh, faster your time. Don't don't rush in your life. Just uh, just be in this moment. Uh, I have to ask you to turn off your phones, please. Don't distract our speeches. Thank you so much. Uh, and we have two more speeches, and uh, uh, it's also, um, I I'd like to mention that uh, uh, both of their speeches should be about understanding uh, uh, their styles, but in uh, the, the next uh, one, it's un about understanding the communication style, and uh, it will be Palina Chilnakova. So I invite you to the stage. Thank you. Uh, where's your day, Palina? Uh, how to translate in English Dienst uh, Ruka? Ordinary day. Yeah. So I was studying until July almost, and on August I'm going to a new work, so I just want to relax a little bit and doing nothing for several days. Like today, I was doing really nothing, just preparing for. Uh, the role preparing for the meeting with uh, agenda and so on. But something special happened to you right now, you know? Yeah. You know, on the stage with your speech. Yeah. <clears throat> so, how was your day, dear students? Usually, I started my lessons with this question. I had already mentioned in one of, of my previous speeches that this year I was working as a teacher of mathematics for high school students and I was preparing them for exams. The educational center where I'm working, where I was working, is called Maximum, maybe you know. So parents who maybe have teenage children, please don't treat my performance as a commercial <laughs> because I'm going to talk a lot about my experience in this company company today. So what can prevent a teenager from studying well? What can distract him from purposeful preparing for the exam? Maybe he or she is lazy, maybe there is a lack of motivation, maybe studying is not on his uh, daily, his list of a daily routine. Maybe He's struggling with unhappy love, his first love. Maybe he has difficulties in communication with parents or peers and so on. In maximum, teachers' responsibilities includes not only talking about um, um, different methods for solving um, a quadratic equation or Pythagorean theorem, who remembers, by the way, 
Professor Borel Serum. I do. <laughs> great. <laughs> That's really great. But also helping the teenager with time management, self-confidence, maintaining of motivation, struggling with stress, standing to stressful situation which may occur during their exam, and so on. Which time of communication would be appropriate for instance a teenager to be strict enough, to be respected by him, but at the same time to be helpful. Um, at the training for teachers, we were studying how to find out which style of communication would be approachable for different types of students. Formally, there are four types of students. The first type is active knowing. Such student is pretty good at subject and he also likes to be praised. Sometimes he can help his classmates with some exercises, but sometimes he can ashamed everyone who is not as smart as him. Um, the representative of this type can either contribute to the process, the process of the lesson by knowing the answer to each question and always offering some interesting ideas. Or, on the contrary, heck, he can damage the lesson, he can distract teachers and confuse other students, for example, by shouting the answer from his place. The second type of students is active unknowing. Such student didn't really know a lot about, about the subject um, and he, he's playing a role of a class clown, if you know what am I talking about. So he likes to attract attention on himself by making jokes, inappropriate sounds and laughter. Of course, such behavior usually damaged the lesson. I think that the best communicational styles, style for this group of students um, would be direct. Uh, the, teacher, the teacher must direct the energy of such students into the right direction, set boundaries of um, behavior, um, and also I don't know, just watch the discipline of the student and also motivate them by challenge. It's really important. For example, there was a girl in my group who was pretty smart, but she was overly curious. She wants to know everything about everyone, including me, the teacher. Right after the first lesson, she came to me and asked to follow my Instagram account. Photo in bikini, <laughs> um, stories from university parties. Overall, overall, I don't want her to subscribe. <laughs> Sorry, that's actually my private account. You, my student, I'm your teacher. It seems like a little bit inappropriate. Okay, she said, but I'll find it anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm very purposeful. <laughs> I was able to find the right words. You're purposeful. That's great. This quality will definitely help you to, to pass your exam for the, for the top five, I answered. Of course, after this um, spring situation, I closed my Instagram account and <laughs> you're not going to believe that, but she was working hard during the whole year. Uh, there was another funny girl who brought a, a clockwork toy of a million and this toy started to jump over his head and sing a song right at the lesson. I had to leave her after the class to fulfill gifts in homework, almost till the late night. Um, the third type of students is passive knowing. Such students are always sitting at the class desk and doing exercises independently. 
to be better for the teacher. However, the teacher may overlook uh, piece of knowledge in piece of this uh, piece of knowledge of this child. So uh, overall, it's very difficult to get any feedback from him. Do you like the lesson? Is it helpful for you? Is it difficult uh, for you? How do you feel about the group? How do you feel about me? It's nothing. But even more dangerous is the uh, the forest type of students. Uh, I call them passive unknowers. Uh, such students always ashamed, always afraid to be ashamed. They uh, always afraid to answer the the question and to ask uh, incorrectly. So they get very shy. Uh, there was a boy from the ninth grade who two weeks before the exam admitted that he didn't know how to divide three rows. Ninth grade. So for shy and unsociable students, the best way of communication will be supportive. It's calm and gentle. This type of communication will help them to open up and trust you. Uh, I see you, I'm, <laughs> I'm ending. So, whatever type of communication I was using during this year, working with teenagers was really hard. A lot of funny stories about my experience in Maximum. So maybe uh, sometimes I I will do uh, like COVID speech or something, and I will share all of these stories with you. But I'll try to do it better using wider variety of communicational styles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your live story. And it was a speech about uh, communication styles. The next one will be about leadership styles. And I'm pretty sure that the next speaker will, will be excellent audible. Of course, I know her and I heard already speakers of her. Their third speakers for today is Anna Gonzalez. Come to the stage. I had a crazy day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, suddenly I realize I'm going to be on a business trip from tomorrow. No, Friday. No, Saturday for the rest of the month. So I had to cancel. I had to cancel a lot of appointments and things. So it's been crazy, and I need to do a lot of things before I leave. So, including leaving some of my plans. So if you guys are interested. <laughs> Yeah, so, <coughs> all right, so thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. I was thinking about what's my leadership style and what leadership style is and what it comes with. I always thought that you can only have one or two, maybe, you know, a leadership styles and then you cannot move from there to a different one. So actually this uh, project was very helpful for me. So it helped me understand my own personal journey, which I'm going to try to share with you. And I will start with the beginning, the origins. So what is my natural, my natural uh, leadership style? I took the test that is, comes in this uh, uh, project. So. Before I tell you the, what the result was of the test, I will tell you the story first. So when I was a kid, my family and I, we, were four, we are four kids. My two brothers, my cousin, who is like my sister, so we are four, one mother. I don't know how she managed to raise four kids of almost around the same age, all of them very similar to me. I mean, strong personality, very active, opinionated, <laughs> and little demos, I would say. She had us all the time in competitions. That's how she managed us. So we were compete so much between each other that even we compete for who knows more Christmas songs. 
<laughs> Until now, I know so many, I can't even forget. <laughs> Later, with my brothers, because we were all together all the time, so we will, I will create many games. We will play the regular games, but that wasn't enough. We were very active, so I will come up with some ideas of new games. I even came up with a soap opera, like a movie. I was the director of the soap opera. I was also an actress. I, I was, we were doing that with my brothers. We are four people, so that's a lot of people for a movie. So that was good. Later, when I went to school and I became a lawyer, and this came in handy. As you may know so, fast, so far, uh, it's a little bit authoritative, my, my natural style. So I will tell basically people what to do and when to do it and how to do it and get, make sure that things get done. That's basically how I grew up and this became reinforced and confirmed when I was a lawyer. Because in, law, in a law firm, in a top law firm, you have a lot of stress and time is very like really after you and a lot of people also are all, all over your shoulders making sure that you do everything in time and you need to be proactive. So I was a machine and that's how I enjoy I sometimes considering myself when it comes to work. I'm a machine when it comes to work. I get things done very quickly so I can relax and do nothing later. So that was me throughout my origin. So I am authoritative and I was very innovative because I can come up with solutions for problems. At the same time, uh, I was very comfortable with this. It worked very well for me during my early years, let's say, university, school, work. Later, I joined ISEC. I don't know if you have heard about ISEC. It's a student organization which is focused on leadership. So when I got there and I became quickly the team leader of one team, my leadership style being telling people what to do <laughs> and finding solutions for the problems so we can get things done very quickly didn't work. People didn't really love it. <laughs> when you will come and say, hey, you, come and do this and that. <laughs> yes, of course, it's a volunteer group, so you cannot fire people. So <laughs> that was always a good way to keep people there working and doing things. So throughout my experience in ISEC, I was hardly trained in how to become more democratic and, and, and have a more coaching style which I learned over the years and I became that now that I took the test, I realized that I actually have become that. It's not my natural style, but it's now my predominant. My strongest style is to be uh, a, a coach, coaching and democratic, meaning that I try to get people involved and I care about what people are, contributions are and their own personal development as well. How did I manage to get there? I didn't do it myself. I had a big team similar to what we have in Toastmasters of people reviewing me and people reviewing them. So that way we can grow and we can change. So I had to follow certain feelings, certain tables in Excel of how many meetings I have with my team members, how many achievements I have, not only on results, but on their uh, feeling comfortable in this position. They're achieving their own goals. How do I manage to get their goals together with the goals of the organization? So that was a very interesting process that until now, I didn't know that it really transformed me. So I'm very thankful for that. And so now I will say, yes, great. I have a nice uh, leadership style. But now that I'm back in university in my master's degree, I came with all the idea of, you know, involving everybody in the process. Yes, teamwork. Yeah, we will do it together. No, these little pieces of humans <laughs> are very lazy. They, don't, they can't think. They can't think on what they want to do. They want them to, people to tell them what to do. And if I want to get a 10, which is what I want, I need to tell them what to do. I try not to, but otherwise it will jeopardize my performance because everything is in teams. So somehow I'm going back to my origins, which I thought I left behind. So now I'm, I'm, I'm realizing not only I'm going back, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying telling people what to do and, and people do it and we get good results, but I get stressed because it's not me anymore completely. But uh, this is how it's working. 
it is hard for me to try to change them. So the only thing I can do is me adapt to them. For me, adapting to them means to become a little bit more authoritative, less democratic. And of course, no coaching at all because nobody cares about being, you know, in a team. They just want to do this, what they have to do and go home. So I've been learning now with this project in Toastmasters on how to find the solution for me to work with them in a way that I can achieve good results and that at the same time I can still be a coach for them, for my team members, because normally I am the team leader, and uh, that I can still help them somehow, although they don't ask for it. So this is a journey that I'm still on. And thanks to this project is that I realized that I'm still in this journey and I still try to match everything together. What I want to leave you with is that the main thing from my story is that you can go from path to path, from leadership style to leadership style in your lifetime without any problems. The, the point is recognize what is your natural leadership style. Then once you recognize, understand, and understand the good and the benefits and the, and the bad, there's always good things and bad things for everything. And then try to put yourself in situations that will challenge yourself. For example, this club offers you many options, right? You can be an evaluator, you can be a mentor, you can be part of the board, and that way you can train new skills. Maybe you are shy, so being part of the board is gonna help you. Maybe you don't know how to mentor every, anyone. Maybe become a mentorship and learn. So that way you can learn and you can understand that at the end of the day, having this background of many leadership styles, which I believe I have right now, that I'm trying, still trying to make them stronger, it will help you to reach to more people and to work better with more people, with you being yourself and still with them being who they are. Finally, I would like to leave you with this make of this training and challenging your daily routine and try to and try to enjoy this process try to enjoy the journey and try to listen to the sound of your own evolution of your own development of the sound of leadership thank you very much Thank you so much. It was a wonderful story, not only about uh, uh, the idea how our leadership styles can be changed, but also how can Toastmasters help us outside Toastmasters and uh, just in our normal life. And I'm happy to announce that uh, we can start right now the best moment of today. It's a small break. <laughs> and you are very welcome uh, to donate uh, some time, like uh, 100 rubles uh, for the community. And you're welcome to the table cookies, cookies yeah? Hey Miles, how are you? Hello Martino, I'm very good, thank you. I'm setting up, I'm the general evaluator, so I'm just re rearranging my room here a little bit. Got it, got it. How are you doing? Taking a lot of notes, right? Yeah, general evaluator is the, I think the most challenging role. Yeah, because yeah, there's agree. you have to, to cover everything, and you basically take over the last third of the meeting. So anyway, I, I thought, okay, I'll try it. I'll, I've never done agree, it online before, so <laughs> I, I I will not disturb you if you. I, I no will problem. Not like <laughs> I know no you're problem. Now busy with the. I'll turn my camera on now, see, because I wanted I wanted a background that's less distracting. So I got a clear background behind me now, as opposed to we the have Daniel cabinet. as well online, right? 
Yes. I think. Yeah, Daniel Daniel's on the London now. Yes, sir, yes. But not during the break. He's on taking a break. Daniel, break. are you in London? He's taking a break, Martina. Daniel, are you in London? Oh, mm -hmm. he's taking a break. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. Seven participants online. Why are you in that, Martin? Now Martino's gone. Okay. I will be in the um, camping. Yes, actually, well, I'm traveling. We're not camping. We've um, we've stayed in a few hotels and a, a very nice um, bed and breakfast in a vineyard, and it was just oh, nice. delightful. Yeah, you know, oh. it's uh, it's a very very pretty little valley in Brit southern British Columbia where they uh, grow uh, fruit trees. So um, believe it or not, Canada is not as cold everywhere. <laughs> there are some places that are nice and warm in summer, so hot that you can actually grow fruit. Where I live in Calgary, on the prairies as it's called, we're at almost 4,000 feet, that'd be um, 1,500 or more meters above sea level and it's, it's not warm enough in summer to have fruit trees. On a rare occasion, you'll see some apples. And it's a hot summer, but certainly no lemons, no lemons here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. But, but as I said, grapes, some places they, uh, in British Columbia, they have some very nice vineyards, mm. make some fine wine. Okay. Interesting. Uh, even with uh, even if the temperature goes below zero, it says yeah, you get some yeah, grapes. They, they, the, these grapes survived through the winter when it can get quite cold. Wow. But, um, okay. There's the summers are very hot in southern British Columbia, so there's there's um, apricots and peaches, cherries, plums. And grapes in some some areas. There's not a little, not very many areas. Martino, you asked about London. Do you still need me to get some paperwork from Europe? No, no, that's fine. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, oh. I, I think I sort things out. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. I was about to reach out to to you and to to tell you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good, and thank you for. Uh, if that is needed, uh, you can post it to London until Sunday, and I'll try to collect it if necessary. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I, I sorted it out. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, you are very welcome. Anytime. And thank you for, uh, thank you for willing for for your will to help. Thank you so much for that. Have you, uh, have you visited London, Daniel? What's that? Have you, are you visiting London? Where are you staying in London? I'm attending to some personal affairs here. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. I hope you have time also to visit London. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful city. I personally have been just uh, once there. I need to go back. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm actually in the kind of in the on the mountains now, hilly road, and I'm not sure that I have a good connection. Okay. Yeah. Now um, I'm not sure what your laws are there, but uh, in 
in my province in Alberta, Canada, the law is that if you touch your phone, you'll have to pay a $300 fine. Oh, okay. So no, anyway, I actually but if you're, there, you know? you're all hands, there, like taxi you're, driver, you know, you're hands free. So that's good. Just keep your eye on the road. Keep your eyes on yeah, the yeah, road. Yeah. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah. But my friend, okay. my friend, about a month ago, we were meeting for uh, uh, going for like a picnic or a walk. And he uh, he was really upset. He was late. And he said, oh, I was pulled over and I was texting you. He was he was at a stoplight and a policeman knocks on his window and says, here's a three hundred dollar ticket. Yeah, so that hurts. No, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I'm actually, sure. you know, a bit hang. I mean, it's it's. I'm not. I, I'm not having my the phone in my hands. It's good. 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 It's, That's excellent. Um, you know, hanged or you know, have um, older iPhone excellent. older. And I'm Very. just listening. I'm just listening in and uh, looking at it from time to time, but. Yeah, yeah, you're not on the agenda for anything, are you? You're just an audience member today, I believe. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very yeah. good. That's great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to, <laughs> to deliver a speech. Well, I could, but you know, probably. So are you? I are you driving for? Yeah. Go. I'm just going to ask: Are you driving for work? You're going somewhere? Are you just sightseeing or? Oh, I was I was in Rome and I'm driving back home. Uh, oh, I mean, right. five hours. Yeah, I was in Rome a couple of days. Yeah. Oh wow. And I'm driving back home now. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I was yeah, but in Rome now it's terribly hot. It's like yeah, it's impossible to to side to 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 side visit. You know, to visit. Dear Toastmasters, dear. Yes, it's time to get back to the meeting. Seems they're having fun there. No one wants to come back. <laughs> dear Toastbusters, dear friends, we are running behind the time. <laughs> Guys, have worth your break. Let's sit down. Hello, hello, hello again. Our online audience. Yep. Here we are. So we are gonna to start one more amazing session, a part of the meeting. It's a table topic. And I'm happy to introduce the Table Topic Master, Alexandra Martinuk. He's closer to the microphone. day-to-day uh, -day activities or daily routine <laughs> yes and for example if you had a, a good night's sleep at night yeah it's uh, uh, half of your uh, daily success basically and if you had a, a good uh, breakfast say it's uh, another half another 50 percent and basically your day is done <laughs> by these two activities only <laughs> Yes, and um, as we are all speaking English here, I would say that um, you know uh, this popular joke about an English lawn and an American admiring it in England and um, actually asking how to order a similar lawn to 
his penthouse in the US. And uh, maybe you know the reply that it's very easy to make a perfect English home, uh, English loan in every part of the uh, world. You uh, <laughs> are only bound to moan your loan for 400 years. That's it. Yeah. So if you if you do something simple. Uh, continuously and repeatedly, you are bound to have a success. So basically, I had my uh, own approach to develop this topic of uh, daily routines, and I had it my way. So my questions for table topic session would be about habits. And what are habits? Day-to-day -day, uh, day -day actions. Uh, so, uh, if you are curious what questions I am going to ask, yes, yeah, so you are welcome to the stage. Uh, online audience and live audience, let's say this. And who is the bravest <laughs> tonight? Of course, Yuri. Of course, Yuri. Yes, and um, for you, I have prepared statements that I believe are true. And for you, I am going to um, ask, uh, do you agree with uh, such and such statement? For example, uh -huh, for you, I will, uh, I will ask this one. Uh, you, do you believe that while you are busy with good habits, you actually have no time for bad ones? which is good. Do you believe this? Can you hear me, yes. Co colleagues? Yes, so as um, I have a lot of bad habits, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to me to answer whether it's uh, true or not. I have a lot of time for my not good habits. Um, I have uh, a lot of bad habits and uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, I have a lot of bad habits. Okay, then, sorry, I'm changing, it's an improvisation session, I'm changing the question uh, on the spot. So, for you, it's an alternative question. So, for you, is it good that by uh, having uh, invested all your time in your bad habits, you have no time for good ones. Is it good for you? Answer this. <laughs> I share, I share my time between good habits and bad ones. Uh, still, it's a compromise. Okay, bad guy. Uh, good reply. You get your eight okay. <laughs> or five marks. So, so can, can I go? Yes, yes, you may. Okay, <laughs> we'll talk later about all your bad habits. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, any volunteers <laughs> to <laughs> to continue the session? Ah, yes. about uh, Moscow Parks, Savitsina. And I have um, uh, written here all my questions uh, for tonight. I have one uh, question uh, marked seven, and uh, it's written here something like, it's a question for Daniel. <laughs> Zahar. I ready to answer my question. Daniel? Yes, I am. If you could speak closer to the microphone so that okay, I could so hear them. I'm calling you to answer my question. I know you are. Ready That's why I'm responding. Oh, speaking about habits, good or bad, whatever. So, dear Daniel and uh, the rest of the audience, do you believe that the class of your habits or the level of your politeness education, 
elegance or upbringing uh, can be shown by what you do alone, drunk <laughs> and in the dark when no one can see you, when you when you are totally alone. So imagine such a situation when you have no limits, no control, and no viewers at all. And if you are behaving in a nice, elegant, polite, uh, <laughs> and, uh, mm, well, um, appropriate way, that means you are totally uh, full of good standards. That's my question. Dear Madam Toastmaster of the Table Topics, the dear Toastmasters and the most distinguished guests, I'd love to be able to see you. Sadly, I can't. Uh, I hope you are there in the audience. There have been a number of questions posed to me, and I would like to have them answered in the order they have been asked. The first question that I heard whether I believe, and the answer to that question is in the affirmative. Yes, I believe, and first and foremost, I believe in myself. I believe in, not just because I love myself that much, which I do, but I believe in the powers of the human abilities to achieve, to plan, forecast, and achieve, and be successful. And being successful, while being reasonable, being prudent, and being rational, is what brings everything else into the picture. Because being rational and prudent and moderate brings forward such other qualities such as elegance, eloquence, politeness, carefulness, care, and perhaps also love. Dear Toastmasters, I wish you all a great day, seize it and enjoy it. Thank you so much, uh, dear Daniel. So it was the perfect answer from the perfect, moderate, <laughs> uh, and prudent uh, Toastmaster, the ideal, I believe, <clears throat> in the world. So uh, I am calling another members of this audience to ask uh, to. Uh, answer my mm, surprise question. If you're brave, good, Lilia. Okay, you're welcome. And I also have a special question for you. So imagine that you liked your lifestyle, uh, your maybe your relationships, and your life in general. Yes, and. Then somehow something happened and something stopped happening anymore. But you remember uh, what exactly you kept doing day by day and you are missing it. So do you agree that just uh, by continuing doing it, you can return to your happiness? First of all, I'd like to um, recollect uh, one myth or story uh, connecting uh, our famous uh, philosopher, Immanuel Kant. Uh, as many philosophers, he used to be quite a strange man uh, who had uh, uh, plenty of uh, somewhat useful habits. Uh, he uh, had uh, his uh, breakfast the exact time uh, he um, uh, met uh, people also at the exact time, but uh, the main thing which amazed me uh, every day during two 
hours, he was uh, going for a walk in one park. And he never, never uh, um, betrayed this tradition. And moreover, he told uh, why uh, I'm so um, accurate, uh, why even I am uh, inventing my profound ideas, because I uh, follow my habits very severely. <laughs> and as for me, I also try to do it. I am, mm, I have some small rituals, some traditions, uh, which are quite uh, useful for me. And one of them is also, uh, no matter uh, what is happening, I try to go for a walk in the park, uh, maybe uh, near my house. Uh, and uh, that gives me a lot of inspiration, <laughs> force, and uh, this habit uh, makes me uh, keep uh, uh, smart and positive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the dear Lilia. And tonight I promised someone that I will speak German. Can you believe it? No? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will speak now, because I know the concept of, of uh, well, forgive my pronunciation, it's called Spaziergang, uh, I think. Yes, Spaziergang. Uh, it's basically, it's walk. So Germans say that you must walk every single day of your life, no matter what, yes? And it will bring you discipline, of course. Yeah, we Russians should do it as well. And speaking about uh, English loans and good habits, uh, you see, sometimes, from time to time, I want to improve myself physically, let's say. And I go to a doctor or, I don't know, cosmetologist, and they keep saying that, okay, um, actually, we'll prescribe some pills for you or something. Because it's very easy to improve your situation, for example. You just need to swim every day, but we know you, you won't, <laughs> you will never do it, yeah? Or for example, for your skin, you need to uh, have self-massage every day, yeah, for five years, and you will be perfect, but you'll never do it, so let's use some mask, you see? And um, I have uh, a question that will lead you in this direction, so I gave you hints, maybe it's a question for girls, actually, a hint. A girls, <laughs> ladies. Huh? Any? Anna, I, I knew. I, I, I think you moved. That means you're ready <laughs> to replay. No? Yeah. <laughs> okay. While you are going, I will ask uh, a question. So uh, I, uh, um, I noticed uh, a survey on the internet that said that if you do something simple day by day during five years you will be endlessly grateful to yourself for doing it in five years yes no that means if you are doing something positive right <laughs> yeah so do you believe in it and do you have uh, any examples about it probably welcome i think it's relevant <laughs> I think it's relevant because, yes, if you do something repeatedly, swimming, running, going to Toastmasters, yeah, uh, I don't know, learning to cook day by day for five uh, years. In five years, you will be really grateful for you and you will look into your mirror, uh, to your passport, with your marital status, wh wherever, and you will be grateful to yourself. So that, do you believe in it? Okay. Okay, so dear Toastmasters, I believe that change takes time, and yes, you can build a habit and do daily routines in order to achieve those habits. However, uh, you need to enjoy those daily routines, and the purpose of the, that um, routine must be must fulfill you somehow. So if we are talking about waking up at 5 a.m. every morning just because, I don't think it's going to work in the long term if you are not a morning person. So 
in order to do something for five years every single day, I think it's a little bit unattainable, meaning that I don't think people can do it. I wouldn't suggest anyone to do it unless what you will get at the end is absolutely worth it. For example, if you have diabetes, then yes, don't eat candy. If you will see a result, a positive result in yourself after five and more years, because it will take care of your body in the long, long term. It has to be, the goal should be a longer term than five years. So if you take care of your sugar intake, then in five, 10 years, you will be good. If you have to, I don't know, wake up in the morning because you want to work in the radio, then yes, waking up at five, six in the morning will pay off. But those are the only reasons why I would think that you can do something for such a long period of time and, and then be happy about the result. Most people have more or less short to long goal terms that tend to change over time, like doing a diet for the next summer, which I am in now, although the cookies, what a mistake. <laughs> and, uh, or taking care of your skin. Once your skin is better, you will take care of, the, of that, but a bit less. So unless the purpose is uh, in a long term, longer than five years, that will really contribute to your life as a whole, then yes, I would think it is worth it. Thank you. My dearest Anna, <laughs> thank you so much. I will, I will show you uh, all even how, how much I admire you because uh, I have actually literally written here at number five what Anna just said. So it's one question minus. Yeah, it's uh, literally uh, written. The best, uh, the best way is to love, really love your good habits. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, um, in the long run. Yeah. If you don't, uh, if you don't uh, like to run, it will not help you in the long run. Oh, yeah. A pun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's what, if you, we, if, uh, yes, we have um, time for one more question. So if you didn't have your chance, uh, Martino, can you hear me? <laughs> Actually, I was going to start the uh, session with this, this question. Martino, are you here first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just overtaking. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I cannot look oh, at you. No, no, no. I, I have my good habits concerning driving. I'm not going to ask you a question. Really? You will see how tough I am. No, drive. Drive on. Okay. No, no. Goodbye. No, no, no. Not to you. Okay. Anyone? No, no. You're driving. You're driving. Next time you come to Moscow, I will... Well, I mean, I'm, uh, I, can, I can speak. I can speak by looking at the road. I'm, go I'm not going to look in at you Okay. Then you do you want to speak? Do you want I to can speak? speak. Yeah, yeah, I can speak. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on an highway, so I'm, uh, my, my hands are, um, are on the. Um, I'm not on then the phone, please right? Don't so I'm fine. Yourself. Okay, no, 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 fine. Then, okay, no hypocrisy, man. So, so I'm asking a question. Are you ready? Okay. Think so. so it will be a final question then. Also philosophical, a little bit serious. Sorry. Uh, the question is, and actually it's uh, good news about life at all, that whatever happens to us all, to this world at all, and then and it will happen something. So it's only and mostly the habits that will eventually save us. Your daily routine, your day-to-day -day activities, that will save you anyway. Whatever happens, you will mm, uh, prepare breakfast for yourself next morning. And that is what will sell you, your family, and the planet. Do you agree? No. <laughs> I don't. Because I think that... Uh... I agree with Anna. That first of all, yeah, the daily routine should be first enjoyable and should be at the point, right? I mean, it should have the meaning of something. You do something for something. So doing the daily routine, because everyone is doing a daily routine, or everyone is waking up at 5 a.m., or just because, you know, it's fashionable, it's trendy. I don't, I don't think it's, um, it's, 
you know, uh, practical somehow. If I'm waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning because I want to run, you know, I want to create an additional business, you know, and I want to do it before work, right? Okay, that makes sense. But if I want to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning because, you know, a YouTube guy said it, <laughs> and that's, uh, that's the way rich people, they, um, they do it. Uh, I'm not sure about it. So, so yeah, again, I, I would say, have your rituals. My ritual is like, I know, I know one ritual that's stuck with me all my life. It's a morning coffee, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, probably said something I'm not gonna give up. Um, I, I, although I'm now not exaggerating on, on those, I'm not, uh, yeah. I, I, actually, I don't do it exactly when I wake up. I usually wait a bit because, um, yeah, this, that's the way I do it. And yeah, but I'm an early bird. Yeah, that's for sure. I uh, used to be an owl. No, sorry. Yeah. I might mix mixing things. Anyhow, I'm an early bird. Yeah, that's for sure. And um, uh, Martin, yeah, you are doing I, great. I like I like it that way. I'm not sure I'm doing great, but uh, I'm trying. <laughs> Martina, I just admire you uh, that you dared to disagree with me. Honestly, honestly. Uh, yes, and thank you very much for your reply. And best regards to Italy, uh, if you're in Italy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Viva. I'm driving from Rome to Saudi Italy now, actually. Good. And uh, I think we can all be joined in uh, our anticipation to see you live someday, some happy day. Yeah. This uh, times will come soon, I am, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, thank you for replying, Martina, but actually the emphasis more of my question was uh, something different. And to conclude, I will just explain you what, what I meant. Actually, was I, well, when I uh, uh, composed this question, I was thinking about my own grandfather, whose only daily routine was working in his garden. So that means if you doing something uh, meaningful to yourself uh, all the time you will probably have zero results in other other spheres but but you will have a perfect result in one sphere and uh, to conclude in a philosophical way i i will tell you that uh, when um, our grandmother passed away my granny dearest uh, grandfather said uh, next day yeah okay guys so of course it's all our grief but now it's time to make bush yes and for me it was astonishing surprising shocking but yes we did <laughs> made this bush and uh, life went on you see and i wish for you no matter what to continue with your good habits and good daily routines thank you very much Thank you for being such an active table topic master. And we're going to uh, move forward. As a Toastmasters for today, I wish you to enjoy today. Of course, it's still today and to have a great evening. And I'm truly delighted uh, to invite to the stage uh, the current... Uh, hmm? Oh yeah, let's vote, sorry, just a moment, let's vote for, it's very important. Uh, of course, we'll introduce the best uh, speaker in the table topic um, session. I will vote for you. You can find the QR codes uh, on the program, right? Yeah. Just a minute for the voting. Miles, are you here? I hope. Hello. Yep. So we are voting right now for the best uh, table topic speakers. 
but I'm really delighted to invite to the stage the current member of uh, Toastbusters, and uh, he's actually from Canada. Miles, I'm happy to invite you to the stage. As a general evaluator, of course, we are ready to start the next session of today's meeting. Miles? Thank you. Thank you, Natalie, Toastmaster Natalie. Now I'm the general evaluator and I'm now the master of ceremonies. So please do complete your vote for best table topics. I'm abstaining because I don't really know how to use QR codes very well. So welcome fellow Toastmasters. Now we get into a very important part of our session, which is to give feedback to people. Now we are running a little bit behind time. So what I'd like you to do is in this part of the, of the uh, session, when the red card is shown, please start clapping. We're gonna use the clap down technique just to move things along. So our first personal evaluator, speech evaluator is Daniel, and he's evaluating Ekaterina's presentation, Carp Diem. Daniel, please provide the evaluation. Dear Toastmasters, dear Ekaterina, the purpose of today's speech was to write and present a speech with a purpose. And to my mind, the purpose of this speech to tell us that Carpe Diem is actually not a destination, but a process has been achieved. How? There are different ways of presenting music. There are classical, romantical pieces. There are contemporary atonal pieces. And what Yekaterina has presented to us very well today in her not perhaps Tchaikovsky style presentation of a speech, but more like Schnitke type of a presentation that even in a seemingly disjointed and lost speech, there is a very powerful, solid, very palpable structure of images. That's the first strong point. We all could easily follow that structure of images of coffee, books and bookshelves, dishes, and other items of the daily routine. We all know how important the structure is, and that is, I think, uh, the main achievement. Uh, also, she used a very strong title. We all have been intrigued and uh, perhaps even captivated by this carpe diem. Some of us perhaps not even heard that phrase before, perhaps. And to address that, Ekaterina started her speech with a rhetorical question. Do you actually know what carpe diem is? And then there was that sense of a pause and unease and uncertainty. Perhaps that was just carefully planned so that we all have been very well prepared for that uh, very strong sequence of images that not only presented a solid structure for the speech, but, and that is the fourth point already, uh, in a very colorful and powerful way, showed us that all those disjointed images are actually what makes our daily life. Those small little items that seem to be disorderly, they actually are very orderly. And that delivered the main purpose of the speech, that the carpe diem is a destination away, uh, uh, that it is a process away and not a destination. We heard very strong um, descriptive language, such as fast pacing world. And last but not least, I can't help commenting on that beautiful, wonderful, 
descri description of the morning coffee. The vocal variety and uh, the presentation were absolutely fantastic. Overall, the speech has been achieved. Uh, I don't have any specific recommendations. Well done, Ekaterina. Uh, the season the day practice will tell you what to do next. Thank you, Daniel. Wonderful as always. Second personal evaluator for Polina, who presented Communication Maximum. Please welcome Christina Sherkina to the lectern. Christina. Hello. It's very interesting that everybody always says Sharikina, but actually I'm Sharikina. So you can, you can try a bit of the Russian language. <laughs> dear Toastmasters, dear guests, dear Polina, first of all, thank you very much for your amazing project. And let's take a look briefly on the objectives of your project. So the purpose was to learn more about different communication styles and identify your primary style. First of all, what I really want to highlight was how Polina started her amazing speech. She made a lot of open questions to the audience, and by this she obviously attracted your attention. Moreover, I hope that you remember that she added a bit of humor into her presentation. For example, when she made some kind of call to action to parents of possible teenagers who might be here. And you smiled, and you already connected with her. Moreover, I think that your energy, Paulina, and the way you communicate in general with people is amazing. I was really touched sitting on the last line of the room. The second point that I want to highlight, a good one, was the usage of different concrete examples of communication styles. So Paulina told us four amazing stories based on her personal experience. And she also used certain kind of word, words that helped us to imagine the whole picture. So for example, like send boundaries or motivate or uh, something like challenging. So this, for example, it really helped me to imagine you talking with these people. As we all are Toastmasters and we are constantly learning, I obviously have prepared several advices for you, even though it was very difficult to find something. In my opinion, every speech is not for you, it's for people. And what I would offer to challenge yourself on would be to think about value of your own experience for people. So we have heard amazing stories but the question is, what is the value to your public? So I would just probably really challenge you to think about how could your experience be transferred in more concrete results and value for the audience? So what could you challenge people on? My second advice would be about the conclusion of your story. I really admire the whole project. I was very involved. And what I really missed was a very strong conclusion. You had a lot of personal emotions that you transferred throughout your speech. Probably it was because of your time. I don't know, because I didn't see time limits. But by the end of your speech, I was waiting. OK, now you have to summarize your project. Because Polina gave us information about four communication styles. But by the end, I didn't have structure in my head. So probably it would be better if by the end of your speech, you resume everything, the main ideas, and you give the tools for people. How could they use your experience practically in their day-to-day -day life? And the fifth point would be about your personal stories. So I think that when it's about the technical part of the project and person comes to the stage and presents something like one to three, we are not so much attached, but I was very attached to you during your story. And this is amazing. And I also laughed a lot about, for example, your Instagram story. And it's very personal. And this is what really makes us be a part of your story. So overall, Paulina, thank you very much for your project. 
I really enjoyed open questions, sense of humor, your personal stories, examples of ways how to communicate. And I would advise you to work more about value of your speech for the public and how to express it so that people really understand how to do things and try to resume all of your ideas so that people leave this room with a ready call to action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina in Moscow. Wow. We started out with our first personal evaluator, Daniel, coming to us from London, and then we've got Moscow, and now we're going to Japan for our third personal evaluator, CJ Marks, who is evaluating Anna's speech, The Sound of Leadership. Please welcome CJ Marks. Thanks for that, Miles. Anna Gonzalez, let's get right to it. I would like to following the actual evaluation format Toastmasters gives us. So I want to give you two things you did well or excelled at, two things that you may want to work on, and maybe one thing challenge yourself. Anna, the first thing I think you did well was understanding you're talking with a, an audience in the venue and also online. So your voice, your overall pronunciation, everything was clear and easy for people online to follow as well. This can't be understated because a lot of times people get this wrong. You do not. So good job knowing the audience, both online and in the venue. The second thing you did well, you didn't give a speech. You gave a talk. There's a difference. You seemed very relaxed. You seemed in control of your body the whole time. Gestures were very natural. You were very calm and collected up there at the microphone. So good job on being relaxed and giving an actual talk not trying to deliver a speech. So knowing the audience and being comfortable with yourself. Good job there, Anna. Two things to possibly improve upon. Okay, the first thing, I, I think the first 40 to 45 seconds of your talk was a bit kind of all over the place. I think you could have been more focused from the beginning. How? Opening with a question or just getting into your first story. I think just doing that would make your overall talk better and more streamlined. First point of improvement. Second, you gave us several different stories. And these are like different train cars. However, I don't think you really did a great job connecting the train cars. How could this have been improved upon? simply by giving us time connectors. So how much time passed from the first account you gave us to your work experience and what have you. Good, nice stories you gave us, but being more fluid with connecting the details would have made for an overall stronger presentation and structure. I think those are the things we, we could possibly improve upon. Now, to challenge yourself. The title of your talk seems really attractive, The Sound of Leadership. That being said, you didn't really talk about the sound of leadership into the last 30 seconds of your talk. So I would suggest to challenge yourself, either coming up with a different title or finding a way to implement the title into your talk earlier. That would give us the opportunity to actually understand where you're going with the message and to be specified clearer. Ironically enough, I think your structure for your table topics talk was perfect. And if you could implement that into your prepare a talk to be even better. So again, what you did well, good understanding of the audience, good control of your body and overall being calm. Things to improve upon, streamlining the first 40 to 45 seconds of your talk, and also using time indicators to connect your stories to be more cohesive and fluid and to challenge yourself, let's come up with a better title. That said, overall, Anna, well done and looking forward to the opportunity to hear your next talk in the future. Back to you, Miles. Thank you, CJ. So today we've witnessed three very positive and encouraging evaluations, which also though were not just praise, they gave food for thought and opinions for the listeners, for the presenters to take away to work on. So. I'm just, as general evaluator, I'm just going to say we've had three wonderful evaluations where 
the evaluators expressed what they saw, what they heard, what they felt, and commented also about technical aspects of these presentations. Well done. Now, on to the other functionaries that we have serving to evaluate this meeting. I now call upon um, the awe counter to give a two minute summary of what they observed. So please welcome Tatiana to the microphone. the winner of our counters competition today and uh, the, the prize goes to mm -hmm. let me guess there are actually two candidates for this role Yekaterina and Alexander huh? not to me I cannot uh, repeat uh, all of the words and sounds for both of you because there are there were a lot of different types. If you list both of you, it was R M houses so uh, you know and so at a certain point of time, I stopped counting. But still, I would like to say that it was not unknown. It was. It was okay, but still, next time, try to be more careful. Maybe it was because you were nervous, but still try to avoid those sounds because it, it complicates um, listening. Okay, next, um, uh, who else we had? Natalia, Toastmaster, also had some soul three times, R five times, R two times, Lilia had R two times, there were two pauses. I won't uh, tell about those who did only one or two mistakes. Uh, I only point to those who did more than twice. Lilia, the table topic speaker, repeated how after almost every word the sound ah, 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 after almost every word it was not noticed otherwise all the other speakers were just perfect thank you thank you tatiana now to give us some tips on use of the English language and who used the word of the day or the phrase of the day today, please welcome Artem to the microphone. Mr. General Ivanovitcher. Uh, let's start with the things that we need to correct in order to be more effective in speaking English. So, um, there are a couple of sentences that I've scribbled. Uh, I don't, I don't know that before. Uh, it is better to say I didn't know that before. So, this uh, choice of uh, time, grammatical, grammatical time was a bit different. So, I didn't know. Okay, then mm, fully presented, I was fully presented, uh, I was fully present or I was in the moment, which I actually heard in the same speech, I was in the moment, so it is better to say I was in the moment. Moving on, a bit of phonetics. Uh, something. So this sound I heard a couple of times today uh, when we say, well, when it is written th, it is pronounced th. We put the tip of the tongue between our teeth and that's how we make this sound something. 
and there were a couple of grammatical mistakes um, in just a second now let, let, let's have some word word choice um, for example betray a habit well it's okay if you want to put some emphasis but uh, more spoken is to give up a habit uh, and explain you explain to you so explain something to somebody and uh -huh, attract attention on himself it is better to say attract attention and that's it or to draw attention to himself or to something well, that's all with grammar part and let's find out who was the winner with the phrase of the day so there were two people and i think they will be the winners Paulina and anna used phrase of the day two times so a round of applause to Paulina and anna <laughs> so that's it with my report I hope you will be better next time. Well done, Artem. Very well done. So how well were we listening? This is why we have a quiz master. So please welcome Samira to the microphone for her challenge of the quiz. delicious yeah. cookies <laughs> okay um, the first question is uh, what is the meaning of the phrase cafe diem leave in a moment <laughs> yes you're right <laughs> who, who, who was the first <laughs> oh really i'm gonna get take all of them <laughs> um, why are people afraid to live in the present according to it <laughs> and uh, what techniques help to live in the present? Can can you recall them? To enjoy the moment. See see. Yes yes yes. You're right. <laughs> okay. And uh, what brings us happiness, according to the quote mentioned in Yekaterina's speech? It's a It's not a destination yes. by the journey, but it, it's journey, not a destination. Yes, yes you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what subject does Paulina teach to high school students? Math, math. Yes. <laughs> How many types of students does a teacher usually deal with? Or, yes, uh, can you name them? Okay. You're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, what communication style is suitable for students with active unknowing? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Get them out of the room. <laughs> Uh, why did Paulina decide to close her Instagram account? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the features of students with shy face of unknowing? Yes, and? Shy and? They're afraid to ask questions. <laughs> You're right. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is Anna's natural communication style? Yes, all right. And uh, how Anna's style has transformed over time? 
how it, how Anna style has changed. Yes, it has become uh, coaching and democratic. Yeah. Right? You said democratic and you said coaching. <laughs> Since you have nothing to be fun. That's all. <laughs> uh, you were very nice. Thank you. Well done, Samira. One of the things I've learned over time is that when you attend Toastmasters meetings and then you go to your other meetings with other organizations or maybe the company where you work, you start to realize, wow, Toastmasters really has a well-designed agenda and well-designed methods. So now my opportunity is to give some overall comments like that. Uh, first of all, what is interesting about Toastmasters is uh, the meeting does have formality uh, in Toastbusters. The president of the club opens the meeting and introduces the Toastmaster, who is the master of ceremonies for the prepared speeches and table topics. So I like that formality of a person of authority, the president, in this case, taking that role. So well done. Uh, President Tatiana, and you also gave us some really powerful statistics such as 470,000 members around the world. And you as president also took time to invite our guests to have an introduction, to come up to the lectern and really right off the bat, feel like they're part of this meeting, even though this may be their very first time. So I love that part of the design of our meetings. Now, we also only allow in this club the guests to introduce themselves, which is a good thing because clubs that have everyone introduce themselves, that can eat up a lot of time. And today we had 14 people on the agenda. So we don't have that luxury of, of allowing everybody to speak. But our table topics master, Alexandra, conducted table topics with uh, an inviting attitude with humor, and also this is the time when people who don't have a speaking role get to participate in the impromptu speaking. The um, Toastmaster, uh, Natalie, who knows me through random coffee chat, uh, that's a, an initiative on the division. If you want to have a, a chat with the Toastmaster and sort of learn some of the peculiar aspects of, of each of us, uh, I highly recommend that coffee, random coffee chat, and that's how I know Natalie. And I like to uh, congratulate her for uh, helping to be part of this uh, joint meeting with Moscow free speakers. Just terrific that we can get together, especially in summer when, you know, there's a lot of people being away. So combined meetings are a great idea. She was cognizant of the fact that we're using an online platform at the same time as in person. And she did ask about, you know, how is the sound checked with us? And we learned that, or we informed her that we've got to stay near the microphone. Now that's a continuing challenge in these meetings. Um, one of the things I would like to make a daily routine for you to consider and encourage you to uh, do what I did. I don't know if anyone caught it, but when I initially said there's a problem with audio, I, I first said point of order because we use Robert's rules of order and a point of order, you are as a participant permitted to interrupt the session with a point of order because it, it's, it has to be something that is you know, of a serious nature uh, if it's a safety issue, of course, you know, if there's, oh, I see a fire, you just say point of order, uh, we've got something burning back there, we've got to leave. Um, but even if you, your audio is not correct or people can't hear, that is important to address. And uh, so as opposed to, you know, our calling out, move closer to the microphone, to separate you making that statement from, say, some heckler, if you add point of order, please move closer to the microphone. Or Toastmaster, I rise for a point of order if you want to be more formal. 
Um, so thank you for everybody who did work with the microphone. If you want to step away from the microphone, because yes, we'd like to practice vocal variety and gestures. Let's try to see if, if you can step away from the microphone, but remember that you're really going to have to basically shout because sadly uh, on this side of the microphone online, when people drift away from that microphone and they're just using a normal speaking voice, we can hardly hear you. So um, those are some things to work on. Thank you to everyone who helped put this meeting together. We have the banner up, we have the chairs neatly arranged, we have the TV and the sound system all functioning prior to kicking off. That takes a lot of work and thanks to everybody who participates in getting the meeting together like that. And uh, I'm just always amazed today, you know, I'm talking to you from Canada. We have Daniel in London, CJ in Japan, and Martino in Italy, and all of you, my fine Toastbusters and free speakers, Toastmaster friends, you're in Moscow. So uh, it gives me just great hope for our future, our collective future, that we can communicate and, uh, you know, in the spirit of Mira Druzhba. Back to the president to wrap up the meeting. Miles, thank you very much. Would you, would you like to uh, call timer for the report? Oh, like so very so. good. You see, and this is again, point of order, Miles, you forgot the timers report. <laughs> so that, this is why it's necessary. Please welcome our timer. And uh, our timer is Alina. Today, uh, a few people went beyond uh, the time frame. All speakers uh, will prepare uh, a speech. And um, Ekaterina Dimola, Polina Chelnakova, Anna Gonzalez. Each person um, delayed us for a few minutes. Oh, two, two, oh. Minutes, two minutes. Um, our host, uh, Toastmasters of the day, Natalia, uh, made a great uh, connection speak, uh, speech um, between speakers, uh, but uh, that also take a few minutes. Uh, and, uh, but we um, almost keep um, frame time now. Um, all the meeting, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Daria. Now to our president for her final comments. Thank you very much, Miles. Thank you very much, you guys. We are we we have already ran out of time, and I see our laptop is running out of battery. So I'll be brief. Okay, are we ready for table topic? Award. Any guess who is the winner? We have just we have had just five participants tonight. Yes, Anna, this is you. <laughs> you were Thanks. not looking at me like you were. I was shy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Oh, this is the award. Thank you. Okay. And those of you who still have time and energy and has a chance to go to after party, please do so. <laughs> I'll, I, mean, I mean, we as a Toastbusters members, we don't plan to do so, but if you have a, a chance to go, just don't do that. Okay, and uh, for those of you who want our community to have developed, we need some money for that and $100 is, uh, sorry, <laughs> $100 is, Good donation, but 100 rubles is still okay. So you can do it either, either via QR code or <laughs> make a money transfer, or you can pay cash to that tip box, tip jar. Okay, we should make a photo during the end, towards the end of the meeting. Next meeting is going to hold in two weeks from today, which is August 17th, 
you are you all are invited and more than welcome okay and by the way you all did a great job voting for table topic winner and uh, please do not forget to vote for the whole meeting to evaluate all, all participants okay i think it's time for follow -up. Did I say everything? Did I mention Чтобы все влезли, то не важно. Смайл, плиз. Nice to see everybody. Miles, CJ. Bye, Daniel. Bye. 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 See you. Bye, CJ. Bye, Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank, thank you so Thank much. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.